Hi guys, this is Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Today's video is part of the Spellbinders March 2022 um, Club Kit Hop. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, but I will leave all of the in information down below. It is a blog hop hop blog post pop anyway um but you know me i want to do a video too so this is the set that i'm going to use for this video here um i'm planning on stamping and coloring up some of these cute little images so let's go ahead and get started on the card okay so this time i'm going to do some masking which you guys probably have never seen me actually do on my channel so let me first stamp down one of these little balloons And I'm going to stamp it one more time. Okay, and now I'm going to cover that with a piece of post-it tape. Now, the reason I'm doing that is so that I can stamp another of that exact balloon onto the post-it tape and use that as a mask. Okay. And then I'm going to cut this guy out, cut my mask out, and that way I can use it as a mask on my image. And I just realized I'm not cutting quite as far in as I need to. What you need to do when you're doing a mask like this is try to cut on the inside of that black line. That way, it masks off the part in the center because the rest isn't going to really matter all that much. And you can make sure that you've actually got what you need. Let me just trim off the excess here. And you've got what you need um, covered. You'll see what I mean when I put this one down. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, now I'm going to do basically the same thing. I'm going to move. I'm going to move the stamp. And re-stamp it. And move it again. Actually, take that back. I'm going to go ahead and do another mask here. Then I'll move my stamp.
So I'm just placing that mask over the little carrot. Then I'm going to stamp down another that's going to basically overlap a little bit of one of those masks. Now the way that this works is you stamp the first, the, you stamp the piece you want to be in the front first, then you mask it, and then you can stamp the pieces that are going to be up behind it. So my bunch of balloons, I'm going to have, basically they're going to be blocking each other and I don't want it to be translucent this time. I figure this is going to be, they're going to be carrot colored. <laughs> so I'm doing the same steps over and over and over again. I stamp out my image, then I mask and cut out the mask and then I place the mask down and then I stamp it again. So I'm doing that and creating this big bunch of balloons all from one little stamp. Okay, I probably have enough balloons already, but I decided I want a few more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move a couple of those masks that I've already got down and cover a couple of the other balloons that don't have a mask over it so that I can stamp a couple of uh, balloons behind them. Okay, so let's remove those masks and see how this looks. That's probably one of the funnest parts of the whole masking thing. Because every time I do masking, and I'm using post-it tape, uh, but whenever I do that I always wind up getting inky fingers because it, the post-it tape doesn't really absorb it all that much. It kind of repels it back at me. So now I have a bunch of balloons. So my next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and color these up using my Spectrum Noir markers. For the base color of my little um, greenery, I'm doing AG1 and then I'm going in with AG4 just to add a little bit of dimension and then I'm blending it back out with that AG1 again. It's real easy coloring. I'm only using a couple of colors for each of the, um, a couple of shades for each of the colors that I'm using. Now that all of those, the, all of the greenery is done, all of the stems, I'm going ahead and kind of mapping out where I think I want my darkest colors to be. I'm trying a technique I've seen a lot but not used where it's a little bit lighter, closer to the edge of a round object. So I've got a little bit of a darker, this is the OR2 that is going down with the, as the darkest plus the shading, and then I'm going over it with my OR1. Experimented on one of the carrots before I committed completely on that. Um, and that's probably a good idea to do. You know, experiment and see how your colors react to one another and see if you can get the look that you want. I mean, it's just coloring and although I did spend quite a bit of time doing all of the stamping, it's still just paper. If I decided I didn't like it, I could always chuck it and start over. And coloring tends to be fairly therapeutic. So I'm just coloring all of these up with those orange and green, make them look like carrots, and then I'm going to go in with some red for the little circles that are on there, the little dots, polka dots. This is um, DR1. I thought about going darker and changed my mind at the last second. Okay, so all of my balloons, little carrot balloons, are all colored up. Really like the way that these turned out. So now I'm getting out my scissors and I'm going to fussy cut these guys out as well. This time I'm going to leave that little white border around so it looks like these have been die cut. All as one image. Get rid of some of the excess so that I can do a better job cutting. Next I need a sentiment, so I am just going to stamp out Happy Easter, I think it was Happy Easter, yes, Happy Easter on a piece of white cardstock, um, just in some Gina K Obsidian ink, it's the same ink that I've been using for all of my balloons, so it's going to all be matchy matchy, so I'm just going to um, 
stamp that out and then cut it into a sentiment strip that'll fit across the front of my card. I've already got all of my pieces um, ready to go here, so I'm just going to adhere all of those down using a dot liner adhesive. Starting off with a white card panel that I cut to just a little smaller than an A2 size card. Cut it down to about four by five and a quarter, so it'll leave that little bit, about that, I don't know, about an eighth of an inch all the way around my card base. Next, I took a leftover piece of patterned paper from the card kit, and I'm putting that in the center of an orange piece of card stock. So these are going to be a bit smaller than the regular size of the card base. The inner interior panel is about two and three quarters, and then the orange panel is about three and a half inches wide. So it's basically going to make it so it's like a focal point in the center of my card. And the reason I'm doing that this way is that I wanted to pop up that entire panel up onto some foam tape. Next, I'm going to add some foam tape to the back of the balloons. That'll add that little extra bit of dimension that is going to look so nice on this card. Before adhering it down, I'm going to add a little bit of art glitter glue to the back of that foam adhesive, just in case. <laughs> so I've got a little bit of wiggle room to position my balloons. To position my sentiment strip just right, I'm adding a little bit of foam tape to both ends. That way it kind of pops up a little bit over the strings from the balloons that I've got on there since they're already popped up. And then I'm going to put some art glitter glue over the adhesive and in the center so it holds everything in place. As a finishing touch on my card, as usual, I'm going to add a little bit of bling. This time I'm using these real pretty yellowish iridescent sequins that I recently got. I think these were in one of the card kits from Spellbinders. I've gotten so many sequins in lately, I'm having trouble keeping track. Anyway, I'm adding um, a few little sequins on the card and that's going to finish it up. So I hope that you enjoyed this one. If you want to see some more videos where I'm using some Spellbinders products, be sure to check out this playlist. Playlist. Also, be sure to check out the hop. There's all the information down below in the description and over on my blog. And go and show those other creators a bunch of love. Thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful day. And remember, if I can make it, you can too.